It's a killer. Fucking conversation. With just three cool guys talking about fried chicken. It's a killer. Um, at that same food truck um, court I was raving about uh, last week, there is uh, – it's called, like, Monarch um, Creamery, some shit like that. And this dude makes artisanal ice cream. Like, mm. it's just not, like, regular, like, milk ice cream. It's, like, creme fraiche. And, mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. And this guy, he has, like, a – it's, like, a miso Oreo Um uh, ice cream, which was fantastic. He has like a cantaloupe crumble and this plum. Yeah, dude, it's it's fucking awesome. And I'm not a big fan of ice cream, like just uh, just off the rip. It's kind of you know vanilla, but uh, <laughs> that shit. Whoo! Yeah, I, I feel fire. The same. That's what's up. I'm, we'll have to try it one day. You have to take me out or yeah. something. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, when you're not with Musa <laughs> or David, maybe you'll or, maybe or you'll Dickie. take uh, maybe maybe you'll take your co-host out for an ice cream sometime. <laughs> In your BMW. <laughs> yeah. Oh, imagine that, huh? I, I can't break his back. That's why. <laughs> he only gives ice cream to those he can, who, who break his back. And that's that's just not me. It's not something I'm willing to do. I have needs. <laughs> <laughs> he meets my needs. He meets my needs. <laughs> no, that's 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 good. Well, um, I, you know, I did have, uh, like, uh, so I have these neighbors. I have some too. What a crazy coincidence. <laughs> you were just raving about one of them. Um, no, so there are these people who like move uh, like three or four doors down from me. And, uh, you know, t- nice tall man about my height. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, he walks up to me and he says, so Brett, Hey, can you break my back for me? <laughs> 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 no, he doesn't say that. No. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, what, shit, Devin, he asked so me. Though. He asked me like a weird, abstract <laughs> question. Like, like, what? What makes you passionate? And I'm like, I don't have the fucking answer to that question. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, exactly. Never talked to him before. Never talked to him before. Never talked to him before. What makes you passionate? Like he, he, what makes he, you passionate? Now, when he did it, did he look you up and down like you just did me? Uh, no. It's just, that's just a habit when you look at me. Yeah, it's just a oh, habit. Yeah, okay. yeah, Because I like to look at them fresh ass fucking <laughs> Croc slides, which we will get into. So we're not going right, to talk about that now. But uh, but yeah, he asked me what 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 makes me passionate, and I'm like, what the fuck type of question is that? I didn't know how to answer it. I just, like I like mumbled over my words, and I like to talk. And that the first time I was like, I have no idea what the fuck <laughs> to say <laughs> to what makes me passionate, because <laughs> it's just like such a weird off the rip question to ask somebody. Yeah, that is that is a very odd question. I mean, like I could like what are like um what 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 makes you passionate about something if there was No, like, he said what that, makes you like, passionate. And that's like so weird. not that's not like about weird... like cuz I was like fucking with my plants and I love my plants. And yeah. you should uh, just said plants. My plants. Oh my god. <laughs> I would have been like I would have been like neighbors that don't ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was thinking something else, I would really fuck with him. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I have no idea how to answer you know, that it's question. It's really, it's really my new neighbors. I'm just so, <laughs> so passionate so, about them. Yeah, yeah. So to all you new neighbors out there, if you just moved into somewhere and you're looking for like icebreakers. With your your neighbors, don't fall back on w- what makes you passionate. Yeah, ask them um, better questions like, "What time do you leave for work? <laughs> do you lock do you lock both locks when you go to sleep?" <laughs> You know stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Is, this, is, is, is this is this is this is your is your window bulletproof? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, like the, the you, important questions. Yeah, when you filled out your renter's insurance, like how, how much how much value did you claim? <laughs> like how much coverage you got? Not that much. All right, all right. You're you're never mind. <laughs> yeah, it was just such a weird interaction, and uh, these are like the type of neighbors that you know, like it. They're gonna come and go. You know what I mean? Like they're mm, they they like, like, the, like the cops the, have been here like four or five times already. To them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To their house. Yes. You know. Yes. 
they lived like three doors down for me. Wow. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and cops you hate to see it. are my kryptonite. <laughs> they should have said, yeah, p- police. Like, I'm just really passionate about law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know me. Um, that would have scared them off. But they, they see them a lot. Or maybe they know them. I was going to say, maybe you know, they, they probably more, know. more of they know them. So, it, so what was what? the answer? What did you say? Um, I don't. I, I was just like, ah, <laughs> 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 it was. It was really something along that. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. Like uh, sh- my dogs, my 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 fiance, my. Mm. Uh, and he was like, oh, cool, man, cool. It just seems you could like really take care of your plants. And I'm like, yeah, I've rescued all these plants. Like I found them all by the dumpster and wow. brought them all back to Rescue life. Rescue plants. Yeah, wow. yeah. I didn't know that's, yeah, that. That's, that's that is, impressive. I want to laugh really hard, but <laughs> <laughs> it's that's a thing, I guess. I okay. know it totally is. Yeah, yeah I've yeah, rescued, rescued all plants. of my plants. Uh, I have Nora too out there. People She's are like, looking oh, amazing. My little Nora too, love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my little, you know, my little pug. He's so cute. He's He's a rescue. They are not. That's I tell they, people no, that's they're rescues. They do. That's do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fake. yeah, I rescued this one. <laughs> yeah, from a McDonald's parking lot. Paid like 500 bucks. <laughs> I saved him. <laughs> but, uh, no, that shit's funny. But uh, you're like, yeah, I got uh, my, my plants. I uh, Yeah, rescue. They're rescues. He follows me on Instagram, so I wonder if he's going to listen. Probably not, right? He probably doesn't listen. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll I mean, find we'll find out. Yeah, I'll find, we'll out, find when out when I get <laughs> yeah. when I get some shit on my door, him talking shit, or, or I don't know, I don't know. But should that, we should we get this show started? Um, yeah. I just find one more thing I wanted to say about this. Please, yeah. It's just uh, it's really funny, but um, this uh, the I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I did. You can just cut all that out. No That's worries. Fine. No worries. Well, welcome hit to that the applause. Cheese. Hit that applause button, Nick. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, oh. That's, I mean, they're, at this point, they're one in the same. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think Devin thinks that's the applause button. <laughs> we can, uh, we're gonna put it. Uh, we'll put it in the uh, sound effects and post. So. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome we'll to the, the Cheesy one. Gordita Bunch podcast, the official podcast of the Talk About Cult Facebook group. I'm your host, Nick Ortiz, and with me, as always, my co-host, DJ Dill, Devin Hanley. What's goody? What's up? <laughs> and then the gravy on these mashed potatoes. The gravy on these mashed potatoes. Jordan Cravens Krennic. What's up, man? Hey, yo. Uh, that that uh, that free that free, free that free frozen custard. Um, oh yeah, with uh, with your boys. Shout out to Nets. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Nets. Oh, is that the place? No, oh, no, it's called Amy's. Oh, oh yeah, that's. Nets. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yep, okay, yeah. That's right. But shout out New York. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn <laughs> Nets. <laughs> Well, it's great that y'all are here. I'm very happy to be back. We have a really fun episode ahead of us. I mean, we just got done talking about the amazing Colonel Sanders. And I don't know about you, definitely an inspiration. Oh, 100%. This is the kind of man, as a child, a young boy, I said, this is who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, I want to be taking, Colonel Sanders. Taking no shit. Yeah. M- you know, making shit happen. Uh, uh, building a name for and myself. Eaten. Fried given given the, the uh, given the gi- given the title a uh, colonel some high esteem <laughs> considering you don't need to do anything to actually be a colonel <laughs> but nobody knew that have uh, y'all looked into it since I have so I've devised a plan okay what we should do is we should nominate each other yes that's right yeah okay. I remember so, you saying this so I'll nominate Jordan Ugh, Jordan will nominate pass. Devin can't guarantee Devin that one. will nominate me. Yeah, how does that sound? Immediate denial. I know, I know. They're going to be like... A a, a little Colonel Triangle here. I like it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They're going to get Devin's. They're probably going to get mine's and be like, half of this shit is misspelled. (laughs) Like, what the (laughs) fuck does this even mean? I'm going to make up a lot of it, though. Devin is... Devin, I feel like yours are coming out on like lined paper. <laughs> I've, I've already, a- I've already, like, I've already, I already fired mine. up the typewriter. I, I've already chat GPT, uh, GPT'd mine. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's already on its way out. <laughs> AI creating kernels out here. Yeah, uh, that's that's fuck. awesome. But I didn't really even need to it. write my. You don't even need to write your own application to become a kernel. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. <laughs> God, that is crazy. You, I wonder if you can do that. Uh, I mean, really, you should. Uh, that's that's really cool. But yeah, the, so we got some shit we got to get into uh, before we talk about and continue on with the Colonel's amazing story. And it actually turns out this is going to be a three parter. Yeah, it's going to be a three parter because mm. we are going to get into the Colonel. Uh, you know, I'm excited that this is a three parter. Go ahead, though. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to lead up to um, you know, where the Colonel actually, you know, um, sells KFC. Yeah, so there's a lot to talk about. All right, this, this man, is, this man hero. died at 90 years old. So, so he had he had a lot going on, and apparently the man worked for uh, like the month 
until he died. You know what I mean? So killer. He was he was out and about. There's gonna be a lot to talk about. Killer. Is I that just that kept working and working people? and working, and all I could do was think about work all day. <laughs> they told me to. They told me to stop, and I said, "No, I gotta keep on going. I'm gonna keep on crushing that." Yeah. No, so, that's. That, yeah. I mean, that's actually that's really tough. fairly accurate. But before we yeah. get into that, we gotta talk about some news. Live from the Cheesy Gordita Bunch newsroom in Austin, Texas, this is Talk Over the Town with your hosts, Jordan, Nick, and Devin. So Taco Bell, is, they did a collaboration with Crocs. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they look fucking awesome. And yes. Jordan's got them on right now. How wow, fast Jordan. was that turnaround? Uh, I think I got them on Tuesday or Wednesday. Would you order them? I got them on Tuesday, and I, I ordered them straight from the website, actually. When? Tuesday. You ordered them on Tuesday, yeah. and you were already, and this is it's I Sunday. got them yesterday. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Usually so, three so all, business days kind of thing. So, okay. so, all you, uh, so all you listeners, be warned. Be careful if you see uh, Taco Bell Crocs in your uh, entryway, because that means someone upstairs is going hard. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I, so, but there, oh, go ahead, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say, Crocs is like collaborating with everybody, it seems like. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I saw the same week I saw this Taco Bell collab, I saw uh, that they were doing Western wear, and like they had like Crocs boots, like cowboy boots. Uh, then they also did the uh, you remember those Mega Man uh, shoes, the red ones with the yeah yeah. They were oh, doing yeah, yeah. Croc versions of them, but they're yellow. Really? I just want. Yeah. I just. I did yeah. not hear about. Just that. want to give a shout out to yeah, DJ sick. Dill, real quick, future president <laughs> DJ Dill for <laughs> giving a shout out to himself <laughs> for single handedly. Bringing back Crocs to the mainstream. <laughs> so. I mean, I mean, listen. I, he's not I, wrong. He's, he, yeah, you are tried and true when it comes to to Croc Nation. Uh, DJ Deal is so. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's the original crocodile. Yeah, that crocodile. That's that's facts. I mean, um, but uh, just know, Bill Nation, um, that your president won't be wearing Crocs. <laughs> uh, all the time, only only here and there. And yeah, every now do, and then I wear Doc Martens. They are oh. uh, their Taco Bell versions. So, uh, vote Jordan. And I mean, so they're really high quality. The, they are. They're very nice. They're very comfortable. Mm-hmm. The uh, the materials are pretty good. Um, they're squishy. <laughs> It says live moss on separate shoes. Live then moss on the right I, one. Th- does it doesn't say live I'm, mass. I'm, uh, live, yeah. Live yeah. mass. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I'm sure those it. are pretty limited too. I'm sure that those went. They usually are fast. Yeah. I, I know. Like, they're, I mean, I'm on the Crocs website, and they're and they're the advertising is coming soon. So here, so, I'll, I'll pull it up. I got the website up. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But I, I, being on the Crocs website, they've collabed with so many different things. I mean, they've collabed with. Uh, cars. Ooh, uh, Disney's cars. Um, they got Seven Eleven Crocs, Luke Combs. Um, that looks like fucking hillbilly camo Crocs. Uh, I take it back. They're all sold out. They're all sold out already. Yeah, yeah. It, but um, see, look at on the Crocs. It says coming soon. They might do a restock. A lot of times when they drop something like this, um, yeah. somebody tries to buy like a hundred. I'm surprised you didn't, to be honest with you. You yeah. know, the resale wasn't amazing, so I have a rule when I buy and resale. If I can't make at least 20% per, like ROI, I don't buy it. Because mm, mm, it's not mm, worth mm, the time mm. and the energy, right? I have to move the shoe, and it's like I'm responsible. I'm fronting the money. It's like yeah, all yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so so I'll do that. But um, the uh, they did the following day, the sizes 10, 11, 12, 13 were all gone. And then uh, like seven, eight, nine were still available. I think okay, six, seven, eight, nine, something like that. And now they're all gone. So, uh, but that was uh, that was like Wednesday. So wow. Oh wow. Okay. They're, I'm not surprised they're gone. Well, see, there's people. I so I shared your post on the Taco Bell Colt into the Taco Bell Colt Facebook group, and someone said that it's too pricey. God, they're oh, come on. They're sixty five bucks. I mean, that's. I not mean, bad. but for a slide, that does seem pretty steep. Because I mean, the you easy can get slides are at least they're like they're like ninety. They're like no, they're like eighty. And, and I and I would say that that's a little overpriced for some slides. Sure, I mean, you can sure. get some van slides, or you can get. Um, no, don't uh, get me wrong. I'm not saying like like if these if they were clogs, I'd be I'd be totally game to pay sixty five bucks for some shit, clogs. The clogs are like one twenty when they're collapsed. What the fuck, really? I think, yeah. Oh, well, I know the Post Malone clogs were, like, really expensive. Maybe, like, at least 100 though. Yeah, see, and, and like, I, I don't know if I would justify, like, paying, um, like, 65 bucks for... Yeah, I mean, they're they're rad, and they're really, are, comf- they're really comfortable. Like, I Jordan was uh, allowed me to put them on, and, yeah, they're, they're really comfortable, but 65 bones, that's... What do you think, Dill? As, as the, the I think king. that people got, like... You, 
you're not you're you're buying the the you're buying the insignia you're buying yeah, the brand the I think that I think yeah I think that that mm. is not surprising to me at all uh, that that would be the going rate for something like that yeah I'm just not, glad they didn't cost more not surprising at all <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the most you would have paid for them mm. maybe like 80 90 90 really 90 bucks and maybe a hundred if I really if it was close I was like oh, really oh, okay right. interesting I mean they're really comfortable um yeah they are they're re- they're nice shoe they're gonna last you they're see I, I'm very pieces. curious to see how long those decals last you know what I mean that is always a question because it's like uh it's not like in it. It's it's obviously like plastered on or painted on kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is all right because most stuff is right. But, um, but yeah, there's gonna be wear and tear somewhere. The live moss will go first because it's oh, on yeah. the foot, right? Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. But, but the I, material will help it last because it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's like it's like plastic. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, for like cost effective, I bet it is cheaper to like just plaster the bell on top of it as opposed to like making it raise like the Croc logo. Yeah, you know. But I think I think it would have been higher quality, and I, I think that's what Taco Bell should be about. Because to be honest with you, after doing research about KFC. Colonel Sanders, that motherfucker was about quality. And that's something I feel that's like that, that we should be able to yeah. appreciate nowadays, considering how low quality a lot of the shit is. You know? Fair enough, yeah. Well, but, I'm, 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 last thing on these, I'm excited about them. I'm glad I got a pair. And uh, it's for me, it's about uh, it's about being that much more of a, of a Taco Bell person. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. It's about being that much more of a Taco Bell fan, uh, an avid Taco Bell or Patriot. Patriot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the great part is, since no one else will really have these, easy conversation talk, <laughs> easy conversation starter. Yes. So when I meet my neighbors, right, I'm like, hey, check out my Crocs. <laughs> and that's it. And that's Doesn't it. Doesn't even then, give out his name, but look, <laughs> look at my Crocs. Look at my Crocs. <laughs> and um, Croc rocking. And, and what, am I pa- what am I passionate about? <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, it, it allows me to... To constantly to plug the show, ABP always, ABP. always yeah. be plugging, and so um, I just want to take one more moment to uh, shame shame Nick for not uh, throwing the podcast into his neighbor's face as soon as he met him. So <laughs> fair, uh, fair vo- enough. Vo- vote Jordan. <laughs> fair enough. I should have thrown it in his face. Vote, vote, vote Jordan. Jordan. Well, uh, I mean, I- I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what other people think about this. Hopefully, they do another collab, and if it's some clogs, I'll. I'll I may shell out 120 for some clogs. I will say this: they did do this. Is you guys are gonna love this? They did KSC clogs a couple of years ago. Yeah, and uh, and they were fucking rad. You can look them up. Just check them out. Like Google them real quick if you want the KFC clogs. And you know they have the gidgets, right? That's what they're called. What are they called? Gidgets? I, did, digits? Gidgets? Yeah, I maybe. They're, I think they're called gidgets, actually. Anyway, charms. It's, it's oh a charm. Yeah, th- yeah. Yeah, but it's actually I think it's actually called like a a gidget to be honest with you. But Are you questioning my croc terminology <laughs> right now? Which which see um, that is fucking look how much chicken is on the the, the wow. like they got the bucket integrated into it. Oh, they even came out with those platform crocs that are like Holy large as fuck. And his face is on them. They're great. Yeah, that's awesome. But here's the here's one of the best part. I tried to get these, could not buy them. Really? Could not buy them on the on the drop. Why? I think it's because we all found out that the gidget pieces, the, the smell charms, like they smell like chicken. No yes, shit! They smell like chicken! Yo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they have wild. a chicken scent to the to the pieces that go on the toe. Oh, yeah. that's that's either really good or really bad, they depending on who owns it. Two drumsticks, uh, one on each <laughs> on each foot. That is fucking player, bro. I mean, that's cool as fuck, for sure. Yeah. That's cool so, as fuck. I tried to buy them, and I could. they all sold out. Like, I was, like, waiting in, I mean, in that the makes line. Sense. And, like, they, yeah. It that was, makes sense. It was hard to get. I mean, the resale on them, if you look now, if you go up, I think it was... Uh, one I saw it a minute ago. It was one sixty six before fees on StockX, which means they're probably about two ten. No shit. Yeah. So if you want a pair, go, oh go yeah, there, yeah. Bro. Let me let me go bu- break the bank with some fucking Crocs. Hey, get the platform Johns, bro. <laughs> hey, no, that's cool. That's, that, that's <laughs> I mean, that's really awesome. I, I'm excited. Hopefully, they do another collab uh, with Taco Bell, and hopefully, they do another collab with KFC. Maybe I'll be interested in that. But um, anyway, let's move on. Yeah. So on to yeah. our next topic, June 29th. So by the time this episode comes out. The Volcano menu will be back on the menu for the first time since like 2015, which is fucking awesome. Now, if you're not familiar with it, we're talking the Volcano Burrito, the Volcano Taco, and of course, Lava Sauce. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I've said this a lot. I've never got to try it. I, I'm, I'm eager to, to, to get 
to get a rundown of this new uh, of the new pieces of the menu here, the uh, the new section of the menu, the new portion. So we should um we should probably do a whole episode on it. We we already did an episode on it. No, but like us like oh, when tasting it. Comes it out? Oh yeah, I'm totally yeah. game. I'm totally game. We can just sit together and then, you know, Devin, you can join us obviously, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hey. Listen, if they, I'll, I'll, but I don't know, it's probably I'll, outlawed I'll, in Connecticut. I'll, I'll Too eat, spicy. Uh, I'll, I'll eat some uh, I'll eat some of the fire menu, get a sore butthole for the good of the show. Um, <laughs> volcano yeah. menu. You don't have to put it in your yeah. butthole, you just eat it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's I like mean, some sort of the, fucking that's volcano that's menu enema. Like, yeah, seriously. Deal, I mean, that's the, that's my favorite way to eat. My taste buds. <laughs> my taste, taste buds it down better. there. Um, T- taste better. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about it, but not super excited. You know, um, as we talked about, lava menu is, is all right. Um, no, it's the volcano. We'll, we'll How many different names are you going to give it, Devin? In, in, in I'm, one trying minute. A, I'm trying a bunch of different things out <laughs> on this episode. The today. magma sauce is going to be yeah. delicious. <laughs> Man, yeah. <laughs> now the volcano burrito they've already released the prices of this i'm i'm i, I they sound pretty reasonable yeah i actually um, i'm not i'm not opposed so far 399 for the burrito 249 for the taco and 749 for the combo and to add lava sauce to any item is just an extra dollar that's not too bad you know um i i think that i think that dollar seems like a lot the uh, i was thinking that too maybe yeah. like 50 cents yeah, you know 75 cents 75 cents max yeah 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 yeah, yeah no absolutely I, I mean i know it's only a quarter more but that's not the point yeah, okay? yeah. what if it's i get the 10 principle. things yeah what if i get 10 things okay? yeah yeah no absolutely damn if you get 10 things that's like an extra 10 dollars on top of it i know it. dude that's fucking that's like a, back in the day it'd be 10 mcdoubles a <laughs> <laughs> hey, rip t- 10 10 crunchy tacos I'm excited for this. Um, I'm really excited to to taste it again. I don't really remember the distinct flavor of this, um, and hopefully they they do a lava sauce with like a a, um, a uh, bel grande or a nacho fry bel grande, you know, with lava sauce because we pitched it, we pitched it, and uh, I, we know Renee Pichotti listens to there this. You go. Yeah, yeah, I, I I made it intentional. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to taste this. I think that. Um, it's going to be interesting to see Bell Nation's reaction to this because oftentimes, uh, you know, um, to quote Tall Boys, uh, every time they bring things back by popular demand, it just keeps getting more unbearable. Yeah, and um, <laughs> I think that's generally the sentiment of um, Bell Nation. You know, recently I feel like you know, ever since like COVID and like supply chain shit, it just things have been different because like I brought stuff back and it's what been if fine. COVID changed people's taste buds? <laughs> and that's why people don't like it. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, because yeah. it 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 did. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys. Oh fuck! <laughs> like uh, the reason why majority like they didn't like people didn't like the enchirito. They said the recipe changed. People did not like the double, uh, not the double decker. It was the enchirito. They didn't like the Mexican pizza because they said that the that they changed the ingredients. There was like a bunch of that. Are, had come out recently it, where people just didn't like it. I'm 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 so fucking fucked up from you saying that. I'm I'm gonna pass the mic. I'm still thinking <laughs> about that too. I'm just yeah, like I'm maybe still they're thinking blaming. About that. Now you can just blame anything tasting bad on COVID. <laughs> yeah, just like no, oh this my god, taste good at COVID. <laughs> How many times you've had COVID? Oh, three times. Well, of course it would taste terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what are you crazy? Uh, yeah. So I mean, let, let I think we what we should do is um, when it comes out, we should eat it, do it a little taste test, and then those in Bell Nation maybe reach out to some some listeners, see if they want to come on the show, talk about their experience. Uh, I, obviously, there are volcano menu groups that I'm a part of that I could reach out to, and I, I'm sure yeah, let's people get let's get like an admin just, or something. Yeah, yeah, you people who uh, who yeah. are fans from uh, a ones from day one. You yeah, know that, I mean? that would be situation. great. That'd be good because I actually can't. I couldn't speak to it because I, I I never tried it. I know, unfortunately. So okay, all right, cool. Well, then mm, yeah. that's the plan, Bell Nation. Um, I expect it to come out. Uh, it probably be next episode just considering that um well we're doing three part series but we can do a little intermission and talk about the volcano menu and get some people's uh thoughts on this before we get on to part 3 of talking about the kernel we got we got time even if we i mean how long it'll be out like who knows uh, who knows it's yeah, fine. it's, it's usually fine. We about, just, it's we usually just, while supplies last you we know can just I mean, record two episodes and and keep this order is fine yeah okay like totally fine so that is the volcano menu um we will have more as uh obviously as it comes out so if you haven't tried it bell nation already it has been out for a day hit up your app go to your local taco bell and i will say we have had a mitch uh, 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 um, a listener um mitch actually go to the burn it taco bell and he also complained 
about how much uh, the, <laughs> the Burn It Taco Bell sucks. So, um, Burn It Taco Bell, pick it up, baby, sh- pick it up. Should have got, shouldn't got, should have gotten vaccinated so you didn't get that COVID that ruined <laughs> your taste buds. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but uh, our sources for today's episode is Grunge, the Grunge channel on YouTube, and um, an article written by William Whitworth called Kentucky Fried, uh, written and published in 1970. Um, so yeah, th- th- that's what's going to be our source for today's episode. Really great sources. I mean, um, the the article from the the New Yorker. They actually like talk to Colonel Sanders and like get his story and shit. So that's it was a really um really good article, really insightful article. Check it out, and uh, of course check us out on social media: IG at Cheesy Gordita Bunch, uh, Twitter at Cheesy Gordita Bunch, and actually if you'd like, go to our Facebook and follow us on Facebook. Um, but also check out Tall Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out Tall Boys. Now let's move on to today's topic. Let's go. We got a lot of competitors. We know we got a good thing. So many people are trying to. Chicken in different ways. They just think it's a chicken. But it's got to be like Kentucky Fried Chicken if it's going to win its way in the world. So where we left off, it's 1939. The colonel had just been colonelized, and he's finding success with his appearance in Adventures in Good Eating by Duncan Hines. And, of course, he had the Sanders Cafe, and things were really on the up and up for him. I mean, he, th- things were looking bright for old Colonel <laughs> old Harlan Sanders. Ever since I was colonized, I just felt that the world was my uh, 12 piece in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I now, to do. It was on the up and up so much so that the colonel actually acquired a motel in Asheville, North Carolina. Ooh. But unfortunately, it was destroyed by a fire in November of 1939. But you know, Colonel never wanted to, to probably a grease fire. <laughs> you think the <laughs> you think the colonel allowed a grease fire? Hey, he was cooking it up at home. He's probably cooking it up in the, in the hotel, You're too. not wrong, but don't you ever besmutch <laughs> the corner like what? that. Now, never one to just sit idly by, slow down, or be deterred. The colonel, the colonel rebuilt the motel and added a 140-seat restaurant to that motel. Ooh, that's commitment. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this man was about it. He, he, saw, he knew that his fried chicken was going to be the key to his future. So that makes me think that the grease fire might have been intentional. I, he got some money from it. He was like, "Ooh, let me let me add a fucking restaurant to this Whoa, bitch." insurance claim, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, big allegations there, Dill. Big allegations. Yeah, so you got in a 19 chicken conspiracy, is that <laughs> chicken conspiracy. <laughs> so by 1940, the colonel had perfected the secret recipe for frying chicken. Wait, wait, wait. Chick conspiracy. Chick conspiracy. Chick conspiracy. Yeah, that's pretty all right, good. All right, yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it. Um, he made some breakthroughs, you know, in, in his in, in, in his experimentation. So he started using a pressure fryer to cook the chicken, and it cooked the chicken a lot faster than, you know, regular pan frying it. Okay. If you remember last episode, we talked about pan frying chicken and how it took a long time. It took about 30 minutes. That's right. That's right. To, to that was part of the reason they were people were leaving sometime. It, well, that was the reason why he didn't sell it um, like so commodified. You know, because the colonel, he was a really a big stickler. And especially, I don't want to keep talking about next episode, plugging next episode. But as we go into the next episode, you're going to see that the colonel put a heavy emphasis on quality. Quality over money. Uh, oftentimes, that, that was the case. Which I can appreciate. Not every, you know, a lot of people aren't doing that. For sure. Now, you know? after a period of, ex- uh, of experimentation, he found the right balance of pressure, cook time, the right flour, which was very important, the meat fat and fat filtration and as he hoped the pressure method sealed the chicken's flavor preserved its moisture and gave it a soft finish neither greasy nor crusty all in around eight to nine minutes which is is fucking awesome i mean the colonel the colonel was really proud of this he was really proud of all of that experimentation because he knew that it could pay off he knew that this could be the 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 uh, the catalyst to like bring, f- uh, I would say, more financial st- stability. Yeah, really. this, that's uh, the eight to nine minutes. That's a big difference. I mean, that's that's three or four times longer than I need for a soft finish. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm never crusty. Yeah. <laughs> Always greasy, though. Always greasy. That's facts. Yeah, but uh, this is 1940, and we are in a world where we are in. Uh, excuse me. This is 1940, and the world. Excuse me, that says was. <laughs> it should say war, but it says was. Okay. 
But this is 1940, and World War One is a no. year. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> It's, it's all right. In the, this is it's, all it's, being it, cut out. All right. But this in 1940, out, the world was winning a wor- world wonderful will of Woody Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! All right. So this was 1940, and uh, we were about one year into World War II, which is the bloodiest war in history. <laughs> Let's get that applause button. Hit that applause button. Devin, <laughs> Devin change it back to an S. <laughs> <laughs> So, as you'd imagine, in 1941, the Asheville Motel was closed because people weren't traveling. You know, World War yeah. uh, II, people were rationing shit. They were rationing gas. They were rationing food, like a bunch of shit, yeah. because everything was going towards the war effort. Yeah. Now, he had some moving around to do at this point in time. So, he, you know, left his mistress, Claudia, to manage the North Cor- Corbin restaurant and uh, the motel. But ultimately, the colonel sold the Asheville location and this was somewhat of a dark period for the colonel. You know, it was one of those situations where when it rains, it pours, you know. And five years into this, he actually, him and his wife divorced. No worries. He did marry Claudia. So he, he made it. She mm. made an honest man out of him. <laughs> but also while that was happening, the highway junction yeah. in front of his business was completely moved. It bypassed his restaurant completely. And so as you'd imagine, business slowed down. Damn, that's so tough, right? Yeah. Like you're just, I mean, yeah. it, I mean, I can imagine in 1940 Asheville. I mean, Asheville's not the biggest town. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, in North it's Carolina. A, yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a, uh, it's a growing place. It's a place a lot of people are moving these days. We do on the fucking Chamber of Commerce. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> it's no. I mean, I've you're been, gonna want to go out to Asheville. I've all been right? there. I've been there. That's all I'm saying. And a lot of people talk about it like Austin. So that's why I like. Really? Yeah, a lot of people say Austin and Asheville are very similar. So they say about Portland. <laughs> yeah, and. Yeah. Maine, anyway. Maine, Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. <laughs> um, but wait, wait, um, wait, no. But but what I was gonna say was like it's it's tough. Like I can imagine Asheville in the '40s mm. being like really small and like nothing hardly being there. Yeah. Except you know like some fucking mountaineers, some bearded dudes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And <laughs> Sucking <laughs> on ginger. You um, know, drinking beers or something. But like, yeah, I just when I think about Asheville, it's like that one spot is probably like city center type shit, and it's like. Yeah, well, I mean, not not only did he have to close that restaurant, he had to, um, and, and like he was dealing with the misfortune of the highway just completely passing him. But he was also a decommissioned colonel at this point. What? Um, yeah, but the fried chicken is what helped this man. You know, the, the colonel's business persist. Again, he really leaned into that. Now, I don't know what it means to be decommissioned as a colonel. <laughs> Um, I, like yeah. it, it is a lifetime appointment, but maybe you're not a part of like the governor's cabinet at that point. Cause I know whenever you are appointed, you're a part of like the governor's cabinet as like, uh, I don't know. A, what is, yeah. what is it again? Uh, what are we talking about? An elitist? <laughs> yes. You are an elitist if you're a colonel for sure. Uh, 1940 um, was a very tough year for me. They, <laughs> they took away my wife. They took away my business, but most importantly, they took away my title as legitimate colonel. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say the six-year-old colonel needed to a pick him up a pick me up you know he he needed a change so in 1950 he was recommissioned by governor lawrence witherby and he really leaned into the southern gen- the southern gentleman thing you know he started wearing a black suit uh, which you know would later change to uh, the iconic white suit. Mm, he uh, typical. Yeah, he threw on that black ribbon tie. He grew a goatee and grew a mustache, which he actually bleached for uh, quite some time until it like turned gray. Interesting. So he's a, he's the first man to once you go black. He <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually he went back. He went back. Yeah, yeah he, he, went he, back. Did, he did. He did go back. Well, the first H- him and the him and the lead singer of the '90s band Everclear, uh, the two most <laughs> famous. <laughs> Uh, dudes in history to bleach their goatees. Oh, and so. and uh, and and Tom, uh, Michael Jackson, also one of the one of the first he didn't people bleach to his goatee. goatee. No, he just went white. Just <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, okay. oh yes, um, yes. But at this time, that's when he also started to refer to himself as the Colonel. Bleach his skin. He would refer to himself as the Colonel, and all of his friends would refer to him as the Colonel. And that was like a like you're not gonna call me Harlan Sanders. You're gonna call me the Colonel. That's right, baby. Yeah. Put some respect on my name. Basically. Mm. And from there on, he never wore anything um, that wasn't his white suit in public. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like he really wanted to create this this persona. He really wanted to create this character because 
he recognized that this is like going to be probably some good marketing, you know, because it's just a really iconic look. I mean, all across the world now, whenever you see that that little charming old face, you're like, that's a fucking colonel. That's a fucking colonel. That's a yeah. fucking colonel. And I think that's yeah. what he he had that foresight to like really see, which I, I think is it was fucking awesome. Devin, say that's the fucking colonel. So then uh, along came old Governor Weatherby just uh, shaking his finger at me and said, we need to get you back on the colonel train. <laughs> and I was like, sir, I will take that. And I dress to the nines. I do tell you, I put on my nice, my nicest white short, and I tied on my tie. And I said, and anybody who calls me Harland, I was like, take a step back. It's Colonel to you now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what's funny is uh, one thing we didn't mention in the first episode Damn, that's so is good. the Colonel cussed so much. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he cussed so much. This he was is my guy. he was constantly cussing, like in front of people. He said. Men, women, children, didn't matter what company he was in, he was cussing up a storm. Uh, I think he was even quoted saying that he is, uh, he he cussed the prettiest out of anyone he's ever met. Like, that's just like the most southern shit you've ever heard. I cuss so pretty. Until he found God. And then when he found God, he slowed down on how much he start, he, he cussed. I like that. He slowed down. Yeah, he, he, he didn't went from stop. from like 100 words, you know, like 99 of them being cursing to like 97. It, basically. My guy. Basically. He's, a, he's a new man. He's well, new man. And, then the, and then the Lord came into my life and he really started <laughs> to uh, fuck my shit up old big time. And I said, you know what, Colonel, it's time to slow down with all the cussing and the poo-poo words. <laughs> <laughs> now... <clears throat> Do you know why he switched to the white suit? Any uh, guesses? Any guesses? Colonel. I think it's because uh, nobody else was wearing a fucking white suit. Uh, Devin, why, why do you think he was wearing a white suit? Uh, Jordan says mm-hmm. because no one else was doing it, but there are plenty of people doing it. I mean, branding, right? Like, it's just he stands out. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any guess, actually. It was because you could hide flower stains on a white suit. Yeah, that's uh, Can't really do it on a black suit. Give it up for this man. Yeah, that's he's he's ingenious. Ingenious. He's genius. efficient. Yes. And good looking. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, shortly after that, the Colonel franchised his secret recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken to Pete Harmon in 1952, who actually had come up with the name Kentucky Fried Chicken. That wasn't something the Colonel had come up with. That's something that Pete Harmon started calling it because actually it was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. Now, for those who aren't familiar with this fella, that'd be no surprise. Uh, he was born into a Mormon family in 1919, 1919, west of Salt Lake City. Leon Weston Pete Harmon. I have no idea why they call him Pete when his name is Leon Weston. Um, but he was a businessman who actually owned one of the largest cafe restaurants in town. So in 1952, Colonel Sanders taught him his chicken frying process. And uh, Pete agreed to sell it at his restaurant, which was awesome. I mean, his it, that brought in so much business uh, for uh, for uh, uh, old Pete Harmon because the Mormons love that shit. It increased his business so much that uh, other businesses around Salt Lake and actually the surrounding areas um, started inquiring, you know, how to become a franchisee. And before Harlan knew it, in 1956, he had a bunch of informal deals, actually with about seven to eight restaurants, to franchise Kentucky Fried Chicken. There it is. The beginning, the origins. Right there, it is coming to life right oh, before yeah. our eyes. Oh, yeah. This was like one, I mean, I, I talk about it a little more, but like, this is like the birth of fast food. Yeah. You know, this is the birth of franchised food. 1956? Yeah, yeah 1950. Yeah. I would say 1952 because that was when the very first franchise Kentucky Fried Chicken opened. Like, okay. Pete Harmon, Harmon's Cafe in Utah is still technically the first <clears throat> Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, so like, it, it was really – so Pete Harmon was really like he was the one that launched – uh, the colonel into superstardom. It sounds like this is this was oh, like God the no. big. The, God this no. was the. No, no, no. The, Duncan Hines, I would say, is the one who really put the colonel on the map as like a must see, as a must mm. eat type situation. You know, it's just mm. the colonel was was down. You know what I mean? In 1956, he actually had to sell his. Uh, he had to sell his cafe. So uh, apparently, the colonel wasn't really about the money, as I was telling you earlier. He really wanted to make sure the food was was good, you know, more than anything. 
And um, so when he struck a deal with these franchise owners, it was really pennies on the dollar. You know, uh, he was really getting like four cents for every chicken cooked by his method, which in today's money is about 44 cents per chicken. Okay. Yeah. And this was all happening while his restaurant in North Corbin was fucking suffering. Like things weren't just it just was not looking good for him in North Corbin, Kentucky at the Sanders Cafe. So by this time, the colonel was 65 years old. He unfortunately had to close his restaurant, selling it off as a loss. It's crazy. He retired and he found himself virtually penniless. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, So he's 65. He's retired and he receives his first Social Security check of one hundred and five dollars, which is equivalent to one thousand one hundred and forty seven dollars in today's money. Now, according to several reports, the colonel was going to kill himself. Yeah, he was sitting there and he was feeling like this check was basically the government saying, hey, y- you did a good job. Here it is. You know what I mean? Like, sit down, enjoy your retirement. That's all you're going to be able to do from here on out. So the story goes that he believed his life weren't living because he failed so much. I mean, by this time, the colonel had failed in almost every business that he had owned. If you could even like chalk up um, Sanders Cafe, though it sold delicious food, it, it wasn't bringing any in in any money and again he was dependent on those social security checks so the colonel found himself a nice shady tree to sit down and write his last will and testament but instead what he would write is all of his accomplishments in life and you know reviewing this he realized that there was so much more that he can do because there was one thing that he could do better than anybody else and that was make finger licking good fried chicken fried chicken a dark cloud, a dark cloud then presented itself over my life, and I did not know in which direction the wind would take me, <laughs> Colonel. <laughs> and uh, I was deciding whether or not I was ready to take it up with the Lord. And then all of a sudden, I thought of a splash of chicken right there in some hot oil. And I said, you know what? This is why the Lord put me right here on this planet, to make some more chicken for them good people. <laughs> <laughs> now this was actually false <laughs> that actually did not happen that is uh, the story that's the story that kfc likes to push out oh uh, what is this fucking believe it or not <laughs> part two <laughs> hey lose again Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> fucking burn now he would later write that when talking about this time in his life quote but for me it wasn't a matter of giving up it was just a problem of what to do next and really, the colonel leaned into what he knew, which was making fried chicken. This is bullshit. Yeah, right? Right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, he's just like making up shit. You can't just make shit up. You can't just make shit up. Yeah. You can, oh, yeah. You can, you can sue people when they make shit up. Yeah, maybe. You um, can. When people lie, you can fucking. But see, but like, okay, but like, the, the, remember the thing about Patagonia, the billionaire who, um, who, I guess it's not technically a lie. Because what he did is he said that he gave away all his money um, to a charity uh, whenever he dies. All of his billions would go to charity. Well, the charity that he set up was his own charity. And so the money is like basically being funneled back into his shit. But that's not what we heard. We heard that the billionaire is giving all of his money to charity. So, I mean, really, they have uh, uh, – what is it? The ability to create a myth. A myth about Colonel Sanders. And that's a good myth. That's an inspiring myth of an old man sitting down to write his own last will and testament, then no. realizing that he's accomplished so much. I'd be much. pissed. Oh, yeah. It's- if I was the Colonel. <laughs> well, the Colonel Dude, didn't find out about this. I'm right? just saying, though, if yeah. I was the Colonel or if I was his kids or his grandkids or anybody in his tree, yeah. I'd be like, don't be talking about my my <laughs> pawpaw like that. Don't be talking about. I mean, fair enough. Him like he was fucking some man that was like I don't know weak minded rat. And that's insulting the insulting to people who are yeah. committing they're considering suicide. I'm just saying like I'm not trying to say. I'm trying to say like don't be trying to tell the, the wrong story. This motherfucker was like he's done enough inspiring stuff that we don't need to. A fib about half the shit he's saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I'm like we don't need to make up shit. If he was like. If he failed and then he looked up and said, all right, what the fuck's next? Let's just tell the truth. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the colonel borrowed 87 bucks. He and his wife packed up all their special little herbs and spices, some pressure cookers, and hit the road. And the colonel was, you know, he was going door to door. He was going business to business looking for franchisees. 
and he knew what he had. That's the thing is the Colonel knew that he had an amazing product that people are going to love. And during this time is when he met, when he meets um, Dave Thomas. Now, we did do an episode about Wendy, so we really talked about the relationship in there, and we talked about how Dave remembered the Colonel as like some uh, old grump, some old Southern grump. So if you want to check that out, it's the Wendy's Nuts uh, episode. Really good episode, really funny episode. Um, so we're not really going to talk about that much here, but uh, we did talk about his success at KFC. Dave Thomas's yeah. sex- success at KFC. Dave, Dave Thomas's sex at KFC. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how. Colonel Sanders wanted him to become, you know, one of his most, you know, trusted franchisee managers, but Dave had higher aspirations. All right. He saw some square meat and said, that's me. I'm going to do that. Um, so yeah, but this is the time where, where the Colonel was really going out and about and being really selective about the people who he taught his process to. So the Colonel was eager, but he was not desperate to franchise. And by the 1960s, the Colonel had created the first franchise fast food restaurant and the first internationally franchised restaurant with half a dozen restaurants in Canada, Mexico, and Jamaica, man. The wow. first. Wow. Yes. Jamaica. In Jamaica. In Jamaica, yes. And in Mexico. That's a probably place. where they got jerk chicken from from, <laughs> from, from Colonel, Colonel Sanders. Sanders. <laughs> that, it's all, it all makes sense. Oh, it does. It's it all, all makes Things sense. are putting it together. Mm, things oh are coming gosh. together. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the Colonel could barely... <laughs> Keep up with the growth of the company, and though he was—that's the—that's the most. I'm sorry, that's the most colonizer <laughs> propaganda <laughs> untrue thing I've ever heard. Like, oh, there would be no uh, Jamaican jerk chicken in uh, Jamaica if it wasn't for the Colonel coming oh, down yeah. from it's probably Kentucky. jerk chicken. He was because he was walking around cursing and shit. Man, this guy's kind of a jerk. He makes good chicken, but boy, is his chicken tasty. Yeah, wow, that's some. That, you go get some old jerk's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. But the colonel could barely keep up with the growth. And uh, though he was able to, to patent his method. What a and, turnaround, by and, the way, in oh, such absolutely. a super short time. What the fuck? But yeah. And, uh, but believe me, like during this time, when I say that the colonel was being selective, he was legitimately driving all across, like driving from Kentucky to like Indiana to California, driving all across the country, making going into restaurants, talking to people and say, if you let me cook you chicken. Right now, you're going to love the chicken that I, I, I'm bringing, and you're going to want to sell it. Try me, bitch. Basically. Basically. <laughs> and he did that for years. He w- literally, him and it, he did his own bookkeeping. He did his uh, his own, he grabbed his own spices. And one thing that we didn't, we, we failed to mention is. Um, when you say we failed to mention. <laughs> okay. <excuse me. laughs> one thing that I failed to mention <laughs> just is, is uh, just <laughs> the flour. He was really particular. Like during his experimentation, he tried different flours, and the flour that he ended up landing on was cake flour. Mm, that's the one that perfectly matched the soup. It was now, fine. If they perfectly if matched I'm, the soup. I'm not going to let any just run of the muck <laughs> flour ruin this here uh, suit of mine. Uh, I only am picking the top cake flour before I uh, ruin my dowels. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like he liked cake flour because it was uh, it was um, uh, like sifted. You know, it was thin. It was like fl- I, light I and like, fluffy. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and uh, I don't cook at all, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it sounds, sounds nice. nice. I'm like, gonna trust like, him. <laughs> I'm gonna trust him on this one. Uh, and and really, technically, the Colonel was the, the like the first celebrity chef. You know, he was out there. People knew this who the colonel great. was. People knew who the colonel was. People uh, recognized the colonel. And this is around the time where people were still read. You know what I mean? Where people were still reading, like, uh, the newspaper and staying up to date. And that's why, you know, the Duncan Hines Adventures in Good Eating was so popular is because people were consuming media differently then. And uh, seeing a nice old plaster face of Colonel Sanders really, really made that difference. So... At this point in time, again, he was able to patent his method in cooking, trademark his um, uh, catchphrase, finger licking good, which is actually also the name of his autobiography. Nice. Uh, But before he knew it, he had about 600 locations, and his empire was only growing. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, 600 locations. God, we have one more episode on this. Yeah, and and before this, I mean, before this, he, uh, again, he was, like, in the dumps. He was really... Not not doing so hot. So the fact that he was able to turn around purely based off of his hard work and his work ethic really speaks a lot to this, again, 65-year-old man. It ain't over when you're like – for me personally, like I feel like uh, we, we all have this like mentality of like when you're in your 60s, that's when you're kind of settled. That's when yeah. you know, you're kind of over that hill. 
the colonel saw that 65 only as a number. You know, he mm-hmm. he he was really that that young whippersnapper. People even said like in his 90s, in his 80s and 90s, he was quick witted. He was still like yeah. able to fire it off. He was still able to go out there and really whip the work when it came to uh, to to cooking fried chicken and staying with it. Good for him. <laughs> oh, I yep. thought he was gonna go Same. off. I thought he was gonna go off, and he goes, uh, "Good for him." <laughs> now, no, wait, this, wait. I, I, well, I have something to end to end the episode with. So okay, so yeah, by this time he had turned down dozens of offers to buy his company. I mean, people wanted to buy this shit left and right. Investors would always like come up to him, try to offer him, and he was like kind of over it. So by now he was set financially and he was really worried about what would happen to his company Legacy. after he died. Legacy. Yeah. After he died. So he was ripe. He was ripe to be talked to into selling by the right person. And that's where we're going to pick up next episode where we'll pick up with old John Brown Jr. An aggressive young lawyer ready to charm the mustache off the colonel. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. Well, just when you thought the old colonel was ready to turn it in and uh, head into that oblivion, here we go, folks. 65. How about another 60? What is 65? <laughs> just the number, just the amount of herbs and spices I throw into my special, special recipe. <laughs> and we're only going places. We're only going upwards. And I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about into chit fried chicken uh, history. <laughs> No, I mean, that's that's perfect. That really does put a nice little cap on the kernel um, because this next episode, we're really going to get into the people who bought it and the people who yeah. took the kernel's dream and ran with it. And, of course, we're going to talk about people like us. Yeah, yeah. We're also going to talk about how the time the colonel sued KFC and then, then, then KFC sued him. Oh, it's going to be. And cool. then we'll also talk about the uh, the colonel curse that uh, that one particular Japanese baseball team. Um, <laughs> is is currently being inflicted by. Yeah. This Uh-oh. is. Uh, I can't wait for this. Um, my wow. my last. I, I can do last thoughts. Please. My last thoughts on the episode today are that. Uh, I mean, you look at the the uh, the the peaks and valleys, the ups and downs. You look at the back and forth in this man's life, and and you look at where he really started to get traction, and it was sixty five years old essentially, right? And yeah. a lot of people talk about Colonel Sanders as he is the prototype he is the template story for it's not too late to go chase your dreams mm. i don't know if you know i i I, mean, I don't know you know the you know our audience or you two or how you you know how you think about this but when you hear these stories of people who make it and you know if you're i don't know you're, you're chasing your own dreams and, and you got your own doubts and and this is one of those things do i have enough time le- you left yeah right is yeah. all is, is a big piece of it and when you look at uh, the colonel, you look at this man's life. He is the prime example of it's just not too late. Yeah, and except for you, the guy who's listening to this is definitely too late for you. <laughs> yeah, she, she ain't going anywhere for you, man. <laughs> yeah, but um, that but you look at it and you look at how that's happening and um, and how it's kind of rolling out and how that's uh, that's playing out. And, and, and you got to imagine that the colonel probably ate a fucking ton of, of his own chicken. fried chicken. <laughs> so much. So. So, like, I mean, I think it's pretty amazing that, you know, this guy was born in 1890 and he died in 1980. Rest his soul. Oh, that was that was over 40 years ago. And there's still people you like know, making podcasts. Still, about the, still one of the most recognized fast food logos. Yeah. yeah. Still making podcasts about him. I mean, this guy has really etched himself into fried chicken eternity. Yeah. As far as I can turn. Like, he's he's. I agree with he, that. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, he's, the thing a, he's is, a genuine is, is, icon. It, it, yeah, because he's not just in the American zeitgeist. I mean, KFC is all – my dad was telling me about a story uh, when he was in Kuwait and he went to a KFC in Kuwait. You know, like, and this is, like, early 1990s. Yeah, um, teeny little island, right? That is not an island. No, no. Kuwait's not an island? No, no. You got Kuwait. it. You don't leave that in there. I'm leaving yeah. it in there. Um, so Kuwait, like, yeah, that's, Kuwait. My fa- that's my favorite uh, Hawaiian island. <laughs> <laughs> the big island Kuwait. It's I'm gonna fucking look it up. Yeah, but um but yeah, I totally agree with that. The the colonel is definitely an icon. Um and I do think that that the colonel is someone to uh, aspire to be like. I, I he really drives home uh what it means to like Shit. have a strong work ethic, what it means to mm. not really give up on yourself. I think believing in yourself is the really 
key thing that comes from these like episodes about the colonel is the colonel though people didn't believe in him though people um kind of left him to do his own thing he never stopped believing in himself and he always yeah. knew that he whatever he did if it involved fried chicken it was gonna succeed yeah, yeah. that's and, right for so for for all you uh dreamers out there next time <laughs> you're lying in your beds late at night looking up at the great big sky and you uh, see a shooting see a shooting star go <laughs> across the night sky. That ain't no scar star. That is a little twinkle in the colonel's eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's the colonel looking down on you. Mm. Um, but awesome, Bell Nation. Thank you so much. Uh, please pick us up on next episode. Uh, tell your friends we are on YouTube again. Yes. Yeah, we are on YouTube again. So um, check us out on YouTube if uh, you have YouTube Premium and you want to just listen to it without commercials and turn off your phone and walk away. And keep there listening. better be no commercials on those because we're not fucking getting paid from YouTube. So yeah. there better be no commercials. That's no, all I'm saying. That'd be that'd be awesome if we were getting paid. But also um, check out uh, Gab Trio. Uh, she does all of our cover art. Um, on Instagram. Check her out. Follow her. She also has an Etsy shop you can check out. Check the link in our description uh, of this episode and you'll find the link for her Etsy shop there. And of course, again, follow us, follow me, and keep listening. Great episode. Can't wait to see you boys next time. And uh, for you listeners, come back for part three. Let's get it. And leave us for a review. Dad, I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Spell Nation, uh, KFC Nation. Thanks, all the nations, for listening. This is your president, DJ Dell, signing it off for the gang today. Uh, uh, keep those uh, the special herbs and spices uh, part of your everyday. We love you guys. Bye bye. All right, stay Baja blessed. Holla. This show is made possible thanks to listeners like you. For more great Cheesy Gordita Network content, follow us on social media or go to cheesygorditanetwork.com to stay up to date. Thank you for your support and stay Baja blessed.